Hey everyone, Christopher Beast here, and in today's video we're going to be talking about the theological and mythological connections that exist in vigorous lore, before transitioning to how these connections seem to suggest a potential post-nuclear war. So with really no more delay, let's just get right into this. So let's start off with the most obvious one, and that's Adam. His name is clearly an allusion to the biblical first man. Originally, it was thought in theory to be that's because he's, you know, the first character introduced to the lore that had a solid name and story. But with season 12, I think there is reason to believe it might be for a different reason. There might be a different reason he's named Adam. And, and that could be um, in season 10's second to last cassette. Adam is, like, on the brink of death, he's about to die, and then Ark revives him back to full health. And we don't really know how they do it, but I think it was that he actually died, and that they used the the revival, the Ark revival systems, to bring him back. Uh, much like how Outlanders are. And if this is the case, then perhaps the name Adam is signifying how he is the first Outlander. He's the first guy to be a true outlander he's kind of um the forefather of the outlanders um but that is a, is a touch of a stretch continuing from here we can get back to freya and sutra uh freya and the church of sutra are definitely the big boys in mythological concerns um and i've covered both of their name origins in the past but considering the pretense of season 12 we can make some predictions about their nature first is freya and as i've said her name is significant because she is the sister of frey in uh, Norse mythology, and Frey ultimately fights Sutra in the final battle during Ragnarok. But seeing as her name is that of a god who survives till Ragnarok, I think it is implied that she will survive her battle against the church that occurred in season 11, and will likely emerge alive, um, maybe, maybe revived by the technology of Ark. Um, next we have the church, and as I've said before, Sutra is the god of fire and destruction, and by worshipping him, the church is presenting itself as an agent of chaos and destruction. Seeing as Sutra wishes for the death and destruction of all things, if the church learns that Ark can revive people, it is 100% going to be against their doctrine, and they're going to want to fight. Um, and I think really it can be likened akin to uh, the warriors of Sovereign Guard being Ark and Sutra's minions in kind of a, a semi Ragnarokian battle. I, I mean, I think it's an interesting situation. As for most of Vidra's lore, the Ragnarok event that, that is pertinent in, in the lore has been assumed to be the nuclear apocalypse. But what if the Ragnarokian event is, is a second battle that is on the horizon, and in a battle that is to determine who will rule over the wastes ultimately? Is it Ada and the Outlanders, or the Church and its followers? And really, what does the different sides of that conflict really mean if they win? This possibility of a grand battle also opens up the potential importance of the Preacher. He's this mysterious character who we still know very, very little about. And, but what if he is the leader of the church? You know, we don't know who leads the church, and it does need a leader. And I just find it kind of strange we don't know who the leader is thus far. And we still have this character who is the big mystery of the preacher. So what if it all comes back together? A lot of this, though, is just pure theory. And we won't really know until further seasons develop both factions. Though I find it entertaining to ponder about. I really thought this video was, was something that needed to be made because I want to get us all on the train of thought going deeper into the war that we need to accept the fantasy and the sci-fi aspects of Vigor's War because they're here, they've been here for a while. We need to accept them and we need to learn how to deal with them um, moving forward or else we're really just not going to be able to talk about the war if we completely ignore them. Um, so that's all I've really got for you guys today. This has been Christopher Beast and I hope you guys enjoyed and um, I hope to see you guys next time as well. Ciao!